All right, dude, tonight we've got various and sundry nonsense, a little bit from everywhere, actually. Um, oh, boy, I'm gonna, people are going to be yelling at me about this one. Every, yeah, uh, I'll fuck it. I'll live with it. All right, so are you ready? I'm ready. As ready as anyone can be. I, oh. This is usually past my bedtime, so I appreciate. I do appreciate you jumping I, I, in. I, I vaguely understand that I'm supposed to act shocked at everything I see. No, you just we comment on it because someone must. Yeah. Okay. Each week, Catherine goes out on the world wide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" and it's off the screen a little bit. Crazy. Whoops. Oh, well. I'm crazy. Okay, where are we going to start tonight? Oh, fuck it. I'm, I'm amazed that I'm actually getting anything working at this point, so... Oh, fuck it. All right, let's... Where are we going to start tonight? Well... Walmart! Do I really have to go much further than that? Walmart is kind of ubiquitous. Yeah, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's, it's, it's in every possible segment of our society. Um, if you, you know, it's, it is the one place that appears to be open always. If, if you ever need anything, Walmart is always open. So it makes sense that people would make use of it a considerable deal. And oh boy, howdy, did they do that in Louisiana this week? Cause, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm restraining myself from a thanks Obama joke. Right this second. Um, benefit card glitch sparks Walmart shopping spree in Louisiana. The electronic benefits transfer system allows recipients of government food stamps to purchase goods using a digital card with a set spending limit. But for a few hours over the weekend, that limit disappeared. Walmart local police confer, uh, told CBS affiliate KSLA that officers were called into the stores to help maintain order on Saturday as shoppers swept through the aisles at two stores and bought as much as they could carry. Walmart workers phoned their corporate headquarters, asked how they should handle all the shopping with unlimited government funding spending limits, and were told to keep the registers ringing. They'd make the decision to continue to accept EBT during the out outage so that we could get food for their families, and that Walmart was fully engaged. Okay, now here's here's the the thing. Everybody here can go fuck themselves on this one. Because number 1, if you if you know you're going over your limit on your EBT card and you're doing it anyway, fuck you, dude. You know you're doing shit wrong to begin with. But number 2, Walmart goddamn knows better. All right? This is not this Walmart fucking well knows better because the money comes from somewhere and letting them keep spending. Well, let them spend their tax dollars on us. <laughs> Fuck you, Walmart. Uh, think of all the terrible clothing and uh, boxes of uh, SpaghettiOs they were able to walk out with, though. We have we have just subsidized an entirely new uh, pet industry of, of moo moos <laughs> that, that that's we, we've, there's going to be a resurgence because of this. The American government has just, you know, how many I'm with stupid shirts are now our problem. But think of all the morbidly obese women who can now walk out with all the thongs they've never been able to afford. <laughs> and duck, duck dynasty. Probably those, you ever see those pictures of this person shops at Walmart they put on Facebook all the yes, time? Yes, yes, people of Walmart. That dude woman there, you know, where, you know uh, it's like a... And Duck Dynasty, the guys over Duck Dynasty just opened their, you know, their royalty check this week and went, <laughs> can we just buy the network now? We're, we're we, we don't even, you know, we'll just own the network. Yeah. Oh. How did... I, you have to wonder what the hell happened. Who's getting fired and who's going to pay for this? I want them to, to fucking... I want Walmart sued over this shit. I do. Because really? fuck them. They knew better. Everybody knew better. Fuck everybody. 
Fuck them. Okay, well, I have a bit of more of our regular fare tonight. And I say that... <laughs> have you ever been in a situation, you know you're doing something you shouldn't, but you have to come up with an excuse really quickly on the fly? Uh, no, but the reason I've never been in those situations is I leave a very sheltered life. <laughs> nice. You got a little meta. That one. Yeah. Um... This this one is really do I I, I uh. man oh, masturbating a car at library claimed he was shaving shaving what yes exactly I be oh god oh my god it's from a place called Beaverton. I shit you not. It's from an actual. F <laughs> it's from Beaverton, Oregon. Well, you know, far be it for me to blame the victim, but it sounds like they were asking for it. <laughs> you your town, Beaverton, you're just opening the door for every pervert in the world to come in there and do his thing. Oh, Beaverton police called out of the parking lot of a library Sunday after witnesses report seeing a man masturbating in his car. Uh, Robert Leatherman. The guy's name is Robert Leatherman. He knew what he was doing. <sighs> so I'm going to move to Beaverton and whip it out. Police said Leatherman initially denied even masturbating. Police said he reclined his car sheet, his car seat to shave. Conversation continued. Police said Leatherman admitted to loading up pornography on his cell phone and inappropriately touched himself. Leatherman told police uh -huh. he had been at a friend's house watching football, stopped at the library to return some books. Once at the library, Leatherman said he had an erection and did not want to get out of his car while he was in that condition. Well, first off, thank you. <laughs> I don't want him getting out of the car in that condition either. Every single... Yeah, name you in the channel says, just go to the bathroom, you dipshit! Yeah, go into the library and do it there. Well, yeah. At least someplace that doesn't have windows. He's How? probably used to the tinted screens at the strip club. You know, he didn't think anyone could see him unless they put a quarter in. <laughs> I just... It, it, the, okay, you're coming from a football game to a library. Don't say coming. <laughs> and somewhere in the middle they are at a wreck. What happened? Where did, where, did the, where did the erection come from? It just... I guess I could understand if somebody texted him the dirty pictures, but he loaded them up. He knew they were there. I mean, he didn't. What was the hurry? I don't know. I better, I better get on these while they're while I'm still attracted to women. I guess. <laughs> yeah. What What the hell happened? I mean, so I I, I, blame, I blame Beaverton for having that name. Yeah, Beaverton. Damn you were asking Beaverton. for. Come on. Well, I mean, you know, when I was in when I was in middle school and whatnot, every guy had the issue with the spontaneous boner. But this guy's twenty six. Sure, there's nothing spontaneous about it. He knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. this was well, speaking of more, um, really, that no, no, this is another one of those excuses that uh, I have only ever drove drunk once. I am ashamed of myself for doing it. But I have one time. And when I did it, I was um, driving at about 35 miles an hour like this. <laughs> Very fixed on the road, making damn sure I was going to get to where I was going. I've never done it again. But at least I owned up to the fact this guy. At least he's got a creative excuse about it. Um, drunk Ontario driver. Hold on, I'll get over to you. Uh, says he was just trying to prove Jesus right. <laughs> what? I know! What? Uh, Serena, uh, Sarnia, Ontario. An Ontario man said he wasn't drunk behind the wheel. He just poured alcohol into his ears, testing his theory about how Jesus healed the deaf, and that must have set off the breathalyzer. Because science. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> wow, damn. I broke, we broke Brian early. He's still with us there. It's because of science. <laughs> I just, I. There's, there's stupid and then there's, you're just not trying. I know. If you, uh, points for creativity. I'll give you that. But. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. Court heard that last November, police stopped uh, Burke's vehicle because taillights were out. Breath test showed Blur Burke's blood alcohol level was one and a quarter times the legal limit. Burke, who presented himself, testified the al alcohol he put in his ear increased the breath test results. Although he did admit he drank three beers at a pizza restaurant before being stopped and had one beer earlier in the day. That might have had something to do with it. Maybe! <laughs> okay. If I suddenly lose hearing in my ear, I'm going to a doctor, not a liquor store. I'm not going up. Oh, I can't hear anything. Shoot me the vodka in a funnel. I'll be fine. There's OK. I, I was watching like a law and order once and they said that this one person had actually shoved a bottle up their butt because if you take the alcohol anally it gets you drunk faster yeah and you was don't it this kind of thing do you get drunk faster if you pour it in your ear i don't god i i hope i hope because uh, uh, you just went an entirely different place but yes the shoving the bottle that way you get drunk and you don't have to pat, fail a breathalyzer and one time the one time i did jury duty i pulled a dui for my thing uh -huh. i was jury we were you know and he said, well, I had a beer. And then he specified, well, it was a pint. And like, well, I had a pint once and I'm a big guy. And one pint was enough to make me tipsy. And he's talking about, and he was this tiny little man. So I was like, fuck you. Yeah, you were drunk. I mean, three or four beers. Yes. It had nothing to do with Jesus curing your deafness. You were a, pissed. Just had a beer or four. I had three beers. Oh, and one earlier in the day. Well, that's four beer. That's, you know. Okay, our next one. <clears throat> oh boy. Um, you know, our, I try to give law enforcement the benefit of the doubt. I really do. I try to because it's for all of them, all that are bad actors in the whole law enforcement deal. There are some who are just trying to do their job and they're trying to protect and serve, and they honestly believe that. But this guy. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. Officer loses job. Come on, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm keeping this you. This is a quality this. production you've invited me to be on. <laughs> oh, shut up. Damn it. Uh, officer loses job after firing at squirrel in store. <laughs> well, did the squirrel pull on him first? I mean, <laughs> On Friday, September 27th, the call was made from the Dollar General store on South Shady Street in Mountain City. The call, made by an undisclosed Dollar General employee, was in reference to a squirrel that had made its way into the store. It was causing quite a ruckus. Uh, reportedly, after several attempts to apprehend the squirrel, employees allegedly decided to help as seek the help of local animal control. When the call was received, animal control officer Gary Phillips was unavailable, so town of Mountain City police officer Jody Puntum was dispatched. According to eyewitnesses see the incident, when Officer Putnam arrived, the squirrel was still inside the sto store and become increasingly hostile. Presumably the stress of the incident. Um, I've just, I've got this picture of, of Slappy Squirrel from Animaniacs. Come on! Come on! Hey! Um, I just see a bunch of, you know, teenager employees wearing the uh, aprons and uh, holding uh, brooms, you know, trying to shake. Officer Putnam then made the decision to mace the squirrel. <laughs> oh my God. Um, at the time Officer Putnam deployed the mace, Dollar General customers were allegedly still in the store. Oh. <laughs> but the smell and subsequent burn caused a mass evacuation. Fortunately for Officer Putnam and the squirrel, the mace was not enough to apprehend the squirrel, so Putnam reached for his next line of defense. His service weapon, uh, weapon. At this time, it is unknown how many shots Officer Putnam fired at the squirrel. One eyewitness said they didn't hear a gunshot. 
but at all, but rather the sudden, quote, scream of the squirrel. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like like uh, like a, a heavy metal album for preschoolers. That's if your squirrel is screaming to death, that's that's got to be a sound that's going to haunt you till the day you die. <laughs> when the bystander entered the dollar store, the dollar store officer Putnam had the squirrel pinned beneath his shoe. The animal was obviously dead. Another bystander said that Officer Putnam fired three shots. It is, and this is the best part. It is not clear at this time whether or not any charges will be filed against Putnam. <laughs> Squirrel's family, however, will be filing a civil suit. <laughs> Uh, that the non-lethal option wasn't enough to subdue the squirrel. This must have been one <laughs> bad motherfucker of a squirrel. I mean, I'm thinking fangs, three feet tall, <laughs> bat wings coming out the back, steam out the ears, you know. This must have been one nasty squirrel if he had to shoot it in the head three times. Video and video says, this seems like a bad hee-haw sketch. It does. Oh, cheesy Mike. Oh, the squirrel was wearing a hoodie. Oh, oh, that's oh. that's awful. That's species profiling. <laughs> that's not right. You if you are trying to catch a fucking squirrel, I would think maybe a net. I'll go so far as to let you have the taser. I'll go. I'll give you that far. That's as far. No further. When you mace an entire dollar general to you remember the groundskeeper? From Caddyshack. Oh, sh yeah. What's saying this guy was like, if he hadn't shot the squirrel, we were like, hey, yeah, Carl Spectre there, you know, uh, I'm going to emaciate the squirrel there, don't you? I'm envisioning him going back to his car, coming back with every single goddamn grenade he had. <laughs> that Dollar Jar will be gone. The squirrel will be like, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody think uh, about the, uh, establishment. I buy most of my explosive here. <laughs> Christ. I won't subject you anymore to my bad Bill Murray. That's Jesus Christ. That doesn't seem right. Cops have grenades now? Surprisingly, yes. Uh, there's another story uh, I'll have to get to at some point about how the military is donating its surplus to local police municipalities and they're not keeping track of what they're giving them. One guy at the police municipality, he was in charge of the police department, he was taking these machine guns that the fucking army was giving him and putting them on eBay. So, yeah, they are getting help, getting a hold of shit like grenades. And yeah, this this is happening only in America. OK, I've I understand getting jealous in a relationship. I've had that happen. You know, everybody does. But there's also a tempered response. You have to keep in mind just, you know, rationality on this sort of thing. I think the guy in our next story went a little overboard. Either that or his manhood is really threatened. I don't know which. Um, jealous Saudi husband divorces wife. Okay, when you put Saudi before husband, we know it's going to end badly. <laughs> After she kisses horse in photo. Look at that picture. That's a, uh, you know, that's a passionate kiss. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, he's, a Saudi man divorces wife after discovering a picture of her kissing a horse on various social media networks. Right front page mag. The unnamed woman said she had published the photo of her kissing the horse at a farm near uh, Riyadh. She added that her divorce has not made her regret kissing the horse. <laughs> that's the best line. <laughs> she doesn't regret it. I do it again. I kiss the fucking horse again. Yes, I kiss the horse, and I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> Over there, <laughs> came from it was a John Grisham adaptation. Yeah. Uh, it seems that this brave woman probably isn't the only Saudi lady who'd rather kiss her horse than her husband, as the divorce rate in Saudi Arabia has reportedly gone up twenty one percent. Kuwait News reports her husband first saw the photo on Twitter, was infuriated to see his wife acting quote 
spontaneously. So he wouldn't mind if she planned to kiss the horse. It's yeah. Just, it's it on the spur of the moment. Well, you said you wanted me to be more, you know, in the moment. So I guess. And apparently he responded by engaging in a Muslim practice known as the triple talak, telling his wife, I divorce you three times. She only had to kiss the horse once. Yeah. Good. And I feel that's still the best line. I do not regret <laughs> kissing the horse. I'm, I'm just going to be saying that for weeks now. No one's going to know what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm just going to be going up people. I don't regret kissing the horse. Even though it cost me my marriage to a Saudi man. She was not upset by splitting from a man who could not d distinguish between humans and animals. Yeah, if you are, okay, obviously this relationship is not in a good place to begin with, but if you are this insecure, you don't need to be in the relationship, any kind of relationship. I don't know why he's so mad. She, she has the mask on. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the lips were actually touching the horse. Her face is covered. Yes, it's she, she observed protocol. Oh, now I've, I've got to go on a tangent because Tara's not here. A side tangent because she always goes on one of these. Okay. Um, I uh, I was at the airport this weekend and I saw a Jewish gentleman getting on the plane. He had, you know, the yarmulke keeping his head covered before God. And because I am a stupid person, I thought they have to keep their heads covered as a sign of respect to God. Why don't they just put one great big yarmulke on top of the whole building and then everybody's covered? See? But then they can never leave the building or they would... <laughs> or they only put the yarmulke on when they leave the building? It, I don't... See, but it... Sorry! I told you I'm an idiot! I, I, don't. I told you I'm an idiot! I did, I did, did not, I did not, anyway. Oh, I forgot, happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you. At least you didn't die for another year, you're not that uh. stupid. <laughs> Get on the Darwin Awards. You know. All right, our last one tonight is, I, I don't know how, not only is this, I, someone doesn't understand science, not only is this just offensive on a human level, but it's, it's there's money going into this, which is so this is this has got a whole collection going on here. Um, obviously, there are some places in the world that are not tolerant toward gay, lesbian, bisexual, transsexual, not tolerant. And they don't like them coming to their country. Well, Kuwait has um, a solution. Um Kuwait developing gay detector to keep lesbian. Someone's actually developed gaydar. I I stare. It's I oh know, it's horrible thing, but that is an amazing technological breakthrough. That's got to be like computers reading minds and shit, man. Public health official Yusuf Mindkar is working on a quote clinical test that will allegedly reveal the sexual orientation of people who are trying to enter his country. Official wants to use the test to ban gay people from entering golf corporation companies. Uh, golf cooperation. Yeah, yeah cooperation countries. Uh, senior Kuwait health official has plans to test out the country's, quote, gaydar. Okay, when a news site uses the word gaydar in a story about you, stop. Just, it's stop. Oh. We will take... Stricter measures that help us detect gays, he said in a translation provided by Gulf News. Visitors always have already have access to a health exam for gaining entry to the country. Mincar wants to add the gay test to this routine medical screening, though it is unclear how exactly he means to measure homosexuality. You know, anything I say here is going to be offensive. Anything. I've got like 20 jokes. You know, spring yeah, into mind. Be the United States quash this. I mean, doesn't Kuwait owe us one? <laughs> Seem to recall we helped them out a while back. I don't know. <laughs> quash the gaydar. We'll recall we'll it even. Yeah, yeah. Just, just take, dude, get rid of it. Come on. I know the Republicans won't sign on to that deal, but trust me, we'll be, we'll yeah. be, even Steven. 
Say you guys are going say it. No, I'm not. I have enough trouble with shit I say on the show. And then Yamaka thing. Someone's gonna be pissed about the Yamaka thing. I guarantee goddamn I'm pissed about the Yamaka thing. I guarantee goddamn so you thought it out. <laughs> In the comments section, there's going to be a long, pedantic infomercial of a post about why I was wrong. You watch. Garen goddamn to you. Uh, but it, okay, if you are real, you know, I understand it's concern religiously, but if you're spending this much time thinking about how to find gay people, to the point that you are trying to invoke pseudoscience. Maybe you don't really understand the whole thing to begin with. I'm just still trying to figure out how they're doing it. Is it like, you know, are they scanning brainwaves? Is it a blood test? I mean, are you just holding up, you know, like a playgirl and seeing if people <laughs> jump? I mean, what's going on here? What's the scientific okay. method? For discovering if someone's gay. Yeah, they hold up a play. They, they hold up a hustler and a playgirl. They're like, which one do you want? <laughs> oh, you look at that one. You looked at that one. Then chopped up. I wonder if this is like as, as, as complicated as the gay tests that you were given in school. Remember those? Your, your asshole friends are like, if your middle finger is is longer than your index. Your, right, yeah. Right. Then you're gay. I wonder if he's going, okay, hold me up your fingers. Let's see. You got hair on the middle segment of your fingers. Yeah, yeah if you got hair on those, you're gay. I wonder if it's about probably about as that, you know, that level of. Also, are they paying him for this? The article doesn't say. I think he's just doing it out of uh, concern for his country, it sounds like. No, is, this, I don't... is this pro bono gay testing? It's very pro bono. <laughs> Yeah, it'll set me up. Come on. Which hole do you have the earring in? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, got you, got you. <laughs> so, and then uh, anyone who engages in homosexual acts can be thrown in prison for up to 10 years. And yeah. I just, all I can hear is Mr. Burns saying, I've never seen someone take to a Turkish prison so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Brian. Sorry. Um, Brian! God damn it! <laughs> God damn. That's not that's not my view on homosexuals at all. But just <laughs> there's a Simpsons quote for anything. There's a. I. God damn, it, Brian. I think the first thing we learned tonight is Brian is a bad man. Uh, I've never claimed to be otherwise. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> Can we, Breathe. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble. I'm just a guest here. Who's tell, him I, tell him I'm Tara. I just had a bad day. <laughs> um, what else did we learn tonight? We've learned that if you cannot subdue a squirrel without the use of a nine millimeter... Maybe you should actually go to Police Academy and stop watching Police Academy. See here, that's this. Uh, Jesus Christ. I've learned that all bets are off in Beaverton. Yep. If, if Beaverton, you're just asking for it. You know, you should. Are you surprised? It's Le the Leatherman and Beaverton. Every. No. They should vote to change the name to something more respectable, like Mufftown. That's bad. Um, we've learned that some people uh, might love the ponies. You know, this is—I think it's like the anti-brony here. You know, you kissed a horse. Fuck you. I regret nothing. Yeah. I don't regret kissing the... I'm going to be saying that all week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. If I hadn't kissed that horse, I wouldn't have spent that year in college. Um, We've learned that just because you try to invoke Jesus, it's not getting you off the hook. 
Especially if you're an idiot and you can't do it right. Four beers! He says on the middle of <laughs> his own beer right now. Um, and finally, we learn tonight. Fuck you, Walmart. You, you, no, you want to know why our tax dollars? Oh, your taxes are... Because you fucking assholes stealing the money. Don't talk to me about government. You knew better. Fuck you, Walmart. I think I'm sure I, I would love just that. That sounds like a, a good title for this week. Fuck you, Walmart. But then uh, it's a little little too broad. There's so many reasons. That's, that's a good title for a year, not a week. Yeah, I know. I've learned Nash doesn't really get the concept of yarmulkes. I know. It's, it's just you have it's, to get. I think you're confusing them with uh, umbrellas. <laughs> what? If your head's covered, sharing. It's economical. You're sharing with everybody. You know what they should do? They should uh, do the yarmulkes, like those little umbrellas that were on headbands that you pop over the head. Just have the floating <laughs> yarmulke on the headband. <laughs> now that's okay. That. Someone would yeah, actually just, buy just that. Like, just for like the elder, elderly Jews in Florida. I'm just... Someone would just throwing ideas out there. Someone would actually buy that. In, in like a month, Mike Jeevens is going to have to do a, a video about the pop... Bring! Pop of the umbrella. The umbrella. Oh, God. Oh, God. 